Hola guys and girls and welcome for the week 4 locker room strategy meeting for the GBA. I'm Lars, your head coach here with my assistant coach Frank. Say hello. Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to the strategy meeting. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, last week we uh, sadly uh, came off a loss, but uh, yeah, we don't talk about that. Oh, we don't talk about that. Hold on. I want to know what happened, right? <laughs> let's see what... Let's see what uh, what has missed in our strategy, in our planning. Maybe we can improve it for next week. Try to get the uh, try to get the win, right? Okay. What okay, happened, fair, Lars? Fair, what fair, happened fair, there? Fair, fair, fair. I will talk <laughs> about it. So basically, um, the strategy worked as planned. Uh, uh, screens, Cresselia did, did set up its screens two times. Very nice. Um, uh, we had a very strong early game. Basically, got all mm -hmm. the predictions right and killed a few months here and there. Saved our months. Everything was fine. Then we cut, got kind of off card of guard by the weather ball uh, kilowattrol in the sun, hitting our uh, iron threads for massive damage. So that's a mistake in prep, I want to say, that we didn't look at weather ball in the sun, which of course is nice coverage for the uh, kilowattrol. We just thought threads would be a dead check to that. So mm -hmm. that's a little bit of a mistake. But we still pulled through. We got our positioning we wanted with our setup double dance and amorous. We got the agility. We got the core mind. We were ready to sweep. And then we got uh, poisoned by a 10% sludge wave and did not able to sweep and then I kind of crumbled uh, did click revival blessing uh, very hastily in a, a not very opportune moment lost the kilo, uh, the um, our power mod as well and uh, yeah then we had it maybe a shot with settlements mm -hmm. but spit uh, kilo water was just a very good bring with the other months we brought uh, because after our uh, droid fan was basically gone we didn't have much for kilo water. I was able to revive uh, yeah. it, but it was not enough with the piece we had left. So, yeah, a little bit of a uh, prep oversight, and then the very big thing, of course, sadly, is the hex. A 10%. Against us. Unfortunate. It hurts. I think, yeah, I think for we we'll have to remember perhaps for next uh, for next week, right? To remember these niche sets that can happen. Maybe not Spadef Killer Watchroll, for example, but uh, Weather Ball Killer Watchroll is pretty yeah. common. So it we is, should have thought it, about that. It better. is a weather team. You should always look at, at weather teams. Which ones get Weather Ball can use the, yep. the weather to an advantage. That's a thing. And, Sorry, uh, guys. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't think of it for some reason. Yeah, for some reason we just thought take Killer Watchroll. It's bad in the sun. Can't hit hurricanes. So, yeah, for <laughs> Weather Ball, of course, it can hit very strong as well. <laughs> But okay, yeah, then the, the ten percent is just whatever, you know. Yeah. We forget about that because now we get all the hacks. Basically that's the idea. All the ten percent now in our favor, and then we just win the rest of the seed league. And now we have to look at Goldoa Dragon and mm -hmm. uh, uh, his assistant coach uh, Edison mm -hmm. and the New York Empoleons with a yeah, a very I kinda of wanna say threatening matchup, like a mixed bag. Like similar to last time, I wanna say the offense is a big problem. Especially looking at this first one, which, uh, yeah, because it has a typing which we do not like. Nope. That no. dark type, uh, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna make us think, I think. It's gonna make us think about our team building, so stay tuned for that. Perhaps we have to get a meeting to talk about that, because uh, as you can see, and pretty much you've noticed, that our team is a little weak to, to dark type. And we've been having trouble with powerful dark types so far, and Greninja, guess what, is one of them. Uh, so we, we, yeah. we have to be Probably. prepared for it. Yeah, for sure. We already talked a little bit about this last week. Our big defensive mod, which basically is there to stop the offensive mods, is Cresselia. Of course, it's weak to dark. Our dark mm -hmm. resists are Weavile, Power Mod, and Enamorous, all which are not known for the bulk. So <laughs> no, <laughs> they basically die to coverage moves. So yeah, we already ha we already have some ideas what kind of transfers we want to make. But they, we already put them to the board as well, but they're not uh, through yet. They have to be accepted by the transfer board. So they're not active this week yet, but if they go through, we'll of course announce them properly for the next match where they count. But for now, Indeed. we have to hope and wait that the admin team looks at our trade suggestions and, uh, and approves them. Because they're a little bit evil, to be honest. So yeah. they might not get approved. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so, we hope so. We are following the rules, uh, so as long as we are, uh, you know, uh, with the law, I think we'll be able to do it, despite Other being evil. Otherwise, we have, of course, our uh, assistant coach which is, a, <laughs> is a lawyer as well, which can, it, when it, in, a, in an emergency, can yeah, put, put it in front of a court and get it through the GBA. 
That's right. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, that's enough for that. Now let's look into this matchup. We already talked about Greninja. Speedy, big problem. He has very mm -hmm. other offensive threats. Of course, he has Garchomp, Zapdos, Mew. Mew always is super annoying because it cannot do as much as before. Like, all the defensive sets are not as viable anymore since it lost reliable recovery in either Roost and Recover. But offensively, it can do anything. It can set up hazards. And as, some, as usually for Mew, you just have to scout in the match what happens. Yep. Um, the terror captains of this team, by the way, before we forget, are one, the um, Lilligant, Sarah which can be what? Grass and Fire, and the Serral Edge, which can be Ghost and Fairy. So these are terror captains. Pretty dangerous. Yeah, especially Pretty the Serral Edge, I want to say. Lilligant, yeah, of course, with setup it can be scary, but I, I'm, a, I'm a bit more scared of the Serral Edge, um, especially with the Terra Fairy. We don't think he's going to bring the Quiver Dance, though. Uh, in fact, maybe it's us who will bring the Quiver Dance. Yeah, maybe we are the, going to be the dancing one this time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, other than that, of course, he has a secondary Dark type in Overquill as well, so double the trouble for our team. Zangos can, of course, be annoying, be good, good, uh, good priority. Once again, I'm more scared of the offense of the team than the defense, so it's probably going to be a very offensive matchup. Whoever can grab the uh, initiative there first, keep their pieces alive, he might end up in the sec game. Um, so yeah, smart switching and smart taking move is the is going to be very important in the match. But, uh, indeed, indeed. Yeah. That's basically our analysis. Now going into our team. First the of boys. all, these are the six mom we decided to bring. Randomov making its debut. Then of course, uh, Mrs. Man, the enamorous uh, C tier, the Volcanian. Mm -hmm. Of course, our MDC, the Cresselia, Knuckles, the Weavile, and Droidfan, the Iron Rats. And we yeah. Go. Frank, tell us about... You already spoiled a little bit that we try to dance with this team. Oh, yes. We, we may not, as well start it's, with the with, It's not with Luna Dance. Star. It's not Double Dance, uh, Namorous. No. It is... It, it is Venomoth with Quaver Dance. We started with this one. I yes. think that's the most interesting mod, right, that we bring this week. We're going to try to use as much po possible mods uh, that were drafted. And this is the turn for Venomoth. And we bring a pretty spicy set. They're using Sleep Powder and Quaver Dance. What's spicy about that, you'll ask? It's about the the EVs here. We are, yeah. have a quiver dense, bulky, fast Venomoth. I know, I know. It does everything. It's fast, it's it bulky, it's strong. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's insane. What are these uh, EVs for? So the first one, the speed, 140 speed is to outspeed the Greninja uh, once Venomoth reaches plus one, which is easier since we are bulky. Uh, so getting that plus one is easier. We can get the sleep powder and get that free uh, quiver dance as well. So getting plus one is not going to be as difficult. And then why do we have this bulk as well? So one of the things that could perhaps stop uh, Venomoth quite easily is going to be the fortress. And what we want with this, if the, he's packing a... or they're packing a defensive fortress with zero speed. We want that bulk to not get to hit KO once we are at plus speed with the speed difference with the fortress. Uh, the rest, you know, Tinted Lens does the rest, you know. Even if we have Bug Boss and Sludge Bomb, it hits everything, even if they resist it. It's brutal. Yes, this Venomoth is looking very nice in this match. This is actually, in this match, our dedicated lead. We want mm -hmm. to lead with Venomoth. This is not for late game sweeping. This is a Venomoth. It comes in turn one. Either put something to sleep or starts quiver dancing right away. Fortress, of course, a very likely lead potentially if he wants to hazard stack us. He could have be overcoat, so we can't put it to sleep. That's why we have the bulk for the gyro ball there. And uh, yeah, basically just quiver dance it up. Maybe get plus one, maybe even plus two, and then just do as much damage as possible. Kill as many mons, bring them low, put them to sleep. So in this offensive matchup, we can start being ahead in mons. And actually, mm -hmm. then we are a bit more free in predictions. We can maybe sack something and stuff like that. Be a little bit smarter. But uh, yeah, we are basically in an offensive match like this. We want to put on the pressure right from the start. And yeah, put on our back foot. Of course, lead setup can play some mind games as well. The opponent usually, I myself try to play more careful, want to scout out the team. But uh, yeah, this is definitely going to put some uh, physical or special pressure and of course some mental pressure on the opponent with this Venomoth set. Yeah. We're going to try as well to do mental damage, yeah. as it's called, right? To affect the psyche of the opponent, to be losing months early game in the match, to put them in a difficult position from turn one. Uh, and I think that could work in our favor as well. Venomoth, we trust you. Let's go. Let's go. Next up, let's talk about the Cresselia. It is a Call Mind variant with enough speed to all his base 100s. If they have no speed, so Bulky Zapdos, Bulky Mew, we outbeat that. And then the Psyshock, Moonblast, Call Mind, Moonlight. 
It is a bulky mon, it is fist death, it is there to check the guard chomp, of course, we are immune to the ground moves, we take the from the dragon moves very little, and all the other physical mons it could have versus us, of course, sadly not the Greninja, but that is called what Call Mind is for, because after one Call Mind, or even more Call Minds, we don't have to worry about Dark Pulse anymore, and with Moonless and Psyshock, we do massive damage to his team, if we get to a Call Mind War with the Florges, no problem, we have the Psyshock hit on the physical side, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, basically this is the way to make Cresselia, which is usually a very passive defensive mon, make it a threat, of course it's not something new, Call Mind Cresselia, is a, the standard set for showdown but yeah, uh, yeah. no fun awaiting this time this time we are here with Cresselia to be a threat ourselves and uh, yeah be a check of course to the physically offensive mons indeed indeed there it is next up we have Enamorous this is your choice Garfer and what is the job of Enamorous Frank tell us about that oh yes Enamorous uh, you know doesn't have much uh, about it you just have to add speed sting re revenge kill and perhaps Healing Wish if needed, but I think the coverage of this mod classic, right? Fairy, Ground and Fire, we've been saying it, it's super good against both teams. And this is no exception. And we have this uh, speed spread uh, specifically to outspeed uh, Scarf Garchomp if he decides to bring that in uh, as well. So it always will always be outspeeding, switch into Garchomp if possible and get some momentum ourselves or some damage that way that is the idea we've got with this uh, the rest is just a pretty self-explanatory set just fast and hits hard yeah that's it yeah that's it we want in an offensive match like this you want to have a, a pretty good revenge killer which revenge kill basically everything and yeah being a choice scarf uh, enamorous we are fast and everything the only thing which could feel the outspeed us is a choice scarf greninja but honestly greninja is so fast with our team i don't know do not expect at all that thing to be choice scarfed um yeah, it is fast already. It has priority in Water Shuriken as well, so no real need for it to be Scarf, and then we just revenge kill it with Moonblast. Um, if it didn't get protein, of course, yet, potentially, and not a Dark type anymore. But uh, yeah, that's basically Namus here. Just spam Moonblast most of the time to revenge kill stuff, and then yep. for maybe prediction here with uh, for Mystical Fire, and then Healing Witch just because we don't need any other moves. And there might be a Mon which we prefer more than Namus, and we need Heal Up, so that's basically what that for. Then next up, we got Droid Fan the Iron Treads. This time with a life orb for maximum damage. Want the same speed set as an Amorous and have speed for max speed Garchomp, of course, not Scarf variant. Uh, Earthquake, Ice Spinner, Knockoff, and Stealth Frog. No spin this time. As you already noticed, uh, we want to lead with the Venomoth. And then uh, we have two Rock Meek Mons, of course, in the back is with Weaver and the uh, um, Nutricol Volcanion. Mm -hmm. But as you see, both of them will have the boots, so we don't have to worry about hazards too much. But we won't have it ourselves, of course. And yeah, with this coverage and the life orb, we do massive damage to this team. Zapdos is yep. not a check to us. Life orb, ice spinner with max attack, just too much damage to this thing. And especially with Knockoff, once we knock that off and we potentially get rocks up, he doesn't have the boots anymore. Uh, we just two hit him with ice spinner right away. And uh, yeah, it's just a good speed set. Because it's fast and everything barring the Greninja and Stab Earthquake just hits everything for massive damage barring the Zapdos, which we have Ice Spinner for. And then Knockoff for Utility. Basically, it's just there to set up rocks and after that, just do as much damage as possible before going down to Life Orb or maybe a priority hit from something here and there. But yeah, mm -hmm. next up, we got Volcanion, which is another bulky spread this time. More Spin yep. F. But uh, yeah, what's the job of Volcanion this time, Frank? Volcanion is pretty much to work as the glue of the team, right? Uh, try to answer as much things as possible. Of the notes, we do have this Spadef spread specially, more Spadef than defensive. And what we want here is to not get a 3 kit KO by especially offensive Greninja. Uh, like, he could bring uh, Specs, he could bring Life Orb, that would change the Calyx a little bit. Maybe not 3 uh, three kit KO, they will. But this spread is enough to tank the Greninja pretty well and to pretty much revenge kill it or do a lot of damage with body press right after that, right? So we are packing this massive defense, we're packing the body press. Then we do have obviously Steep Eruption and Flamethrower because it's a couple of stabs that work super well. And then we do have Heavy Slam as well. And that's just in case he brings the, the Forgus. Uh, just to do a little bit of damage to this, right? Uh, heavy Slam plus Steep Eruption, that does a lot of damage. It can also do damage to Fairy uh, Serial Ledge, so it's just neutral damage that we have around that uh, that, that works. It's Volcano is pretty, a pretty heavy boy. Yes, Volcano is a very heavy boy, and uh, yeah, this time we are Terra Grass on this, because we are using this more as a uh, defensive utility piece, take a hit, 
and get things in range, kill them, or kill them potentially. And with the Terra Grass, we can get some key resistances to stuff which wants to hit us with Earthquake, stuff which wants to hit us with an electric move in Zapdos, for example. So for all of that, we have the Terra Grass to suddenly resist that, do not die, and get one more Steam Eruption off Flame for our Body Press Heavy Slam, whatever we choose, what you have in front of us. So yeah, this why, why, that's why we this time Terra Grass. We are minus Speed Nature as well, so we have the other physical moves in Body Press and Heavy Slam not weakened. I mean, Body Press is not affected by that, but the Heavy Slam not weakened mm -hmm. because we are still fast enough and uh, yeah just a good damage to mainly the flaws which could be combined and annoying but uh, yeah that's the volcanian and then last but not least we want of course the revenge killer for the uh greninja a secondary revenge killer with that and that's why we have the weaver here with heavy reboots as well like i mentioned no hazard removal for our team and yeah ice spin on ice set poison jab and brick break no ice shard because the only thing which really would have to ice shard is potentially like a scarf Garchomp, which could come, I want to say, but it doesn't really make sense. Maybe it's uh, offensive Zapdos, which I don't really see either because I see Mobulky for check our mons. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we just outspeed everything and we just want the coverage. Big Break is there potentially to get rid of screens as well, which could happen. And uh, yeah, Poison Jab there for all the potential fairies, be it Florges or Fairy Serolage, if that wants a fairy versus us and Dodge and Night Sash, for example. And uh, yeah, then Ice Bear Nights is just those dead moves. Basically, they are just to be another revenge killer. Not as fast as Namorous, but still fast enough for all the threatening ones of our opponent. Indeed. Indeed, indeed. We got that break break as well, not only for the for the screens, but it's just the only thing we got to actually hurt Greninja. Yeah. Uh, so Greninja is looking like a threat. We have to deal we have to deal with it. So with all mods, we're trying to at least do something that could work for that Greninja. And I think yeah. I think we managed it. You know, I think the most of the Greninja sets we can face uh, are gonna get countered for this, or at least we can work around it. Yes. That's it. Basically, Play as smart as possible around the Greninja and do as much damage as Venomous from the start and then just see how the match goes. Because like it's an offensive match, especially if mons like Mew around, we can't plan too much ahead. But uh, yeah, basically just grab the initiative ourselves and then be the deciding man in the game and go from there. That's the idea of this team. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, these are our six guys. Once again, it's another home game, so very important match for us. There's another extra point on the line for this game. So get your asses into the stadium, support us from Let's the stands. Go. We want to hear your chants. We want to have all the support we can get because with the 10% points we got last week, we kind of are in need of some support from some yes. type force. <laughs> yes, yes. We need the inspiration from your, uh, from the screams of the masses of the Borussia Dove fan. That's what we need. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's all from us. I hope you are excited for the match tomorrow. We will see you there. But uh, yeah, uh, that's all. I will see you tomorrow. Ciao. See you guys.